So today we're going to be looking at the photosynthesis and cell respiration lab using algae beads and a carbon dioxide indicator. Um, a few things to keep in mind while we are looking at the results of this lab are that we are looking at algae, which is a plant, um, but to keep in mind that plants do photosynthesis and cell respiration, and depending on the conditions, one of those processes may kind of take over a little bit more than the other one, and so that's what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, we have a couple of different conditions that we put our algae beads under. We have a white light, like a, under a lamp. We have a green light, a red light. I put some in the window for natural sunlight. And then the last sample was wrapped in tinfoil to put it essentially in the, as much dark as possible. Uh, so today what we'll be taking a look at is how the uh, pH of the carbon dioxide indicator changed when it was put into those conditions. And so what you need to keep in mind, and this is really important for when you go to write your conclusion for this lab, is that when the pH decreases, this indicates an increase in carbon dioxide. When the pH increases, this will indicate a decrease in carbon dioxide. And so what I'd like you to think about right now as we're kind of looking through the results is an increase in carbon dioxide, what does that mean in terms of the process that is kind of taking over? And same thing for a decrease in carbon dioxide. What does that indicate in terms of the process that is taking over? Would we be seeing more photosynthesis or more cell respiration in that case? So think about that, keep that in the back of your head while we look at our results. To start, we want to look at what the carbon dioxide indicator looked like when there was no algae beads in it to start. So this will be kind of our control and this will tell us, did the pH increase or decrease or do nothing? So my carbon dioxide indicator is in this cuvette right here. Um, and when I look at it, I'm gonna just match it up to this pH scale that I have. And so I'm gonna tell you guys what the pH is of each of my samples. This plain carbon dioxide indicator color matches up best with 7.5 as a pH level. So the pH of my CO2 indicator by itself with no plant in it under no conditions, just sitting in the cuvette, is 7.5. Next, we will take a look at what happened when I put the algae beads in the carbon dioxide indicator under a white lamp. So here, you should be able to tell that there is a massive color change here. We have a very deep purple color. If I match it up with my scale, I see here that it's gonna come all the way to the end of my scale. This is at 9.1, is the darkest purple color on this pH scale. So this isn't a full pH scale, you know, pH goes from 0 to 14. Um, this is going to bring us to 9.1. Next, we will take a look at the red light. So we'll take a look at what happened when I put my plants under a red lamp. What I'd like you to keep in mind is the chlorophyll that is in plants, what makes them look green, helps them to absorb colors like red and blue, and it actually reflects colors like green. So if I put it under a red lamp, I would expect it to absorb lots of light. What I see here is I see almost the same deep purple color that I saw when it was just under a white lamp. So again, my pH under the red light is 9.1. The next condition that we used was a green light. And hopefully you can tell from this that I do see a purple color, but it's not as deep purple as it was under the white or the red light. And this does make a little bit of sense because under the green light, I would expect a lot of that light to actually be reflected and not absorbed, which should kind of diminish the amount of photosynthesis that's able to happen, but I'm still providing it with light. So we would expect a little bit to happen. In terms of the pH scale here, this one matches up best with 8.7 for a pH level. So not as much as my white and red light, but still some photosynthesis. My last light condition was just natural sunlight sitting in the window. And I see this gives me pretty much the same results as the white lamp and the red lamp. Um, it wasn't even that sunny today, but it still got enough natural sunlight 
to have photosynthesis kind of take over. And so my pH scale for the natural sunlight, the window, is still 9.1. My final condition is the one wrapped in tinfoil. So we're going to unwrap this. And while I'm doing that, I'd like you to think about what process do you think should be taking over in this case? I'm not providing it with lots of light, but we do know that plants do cell respiration in, as well as photosynthesis. And when I unwrap this one, I notice that the CO2 indicator is very yellow. So in comparison to the carbon dioxide indicator by itself, this is even more yellow, which means the pH is even lower than what it started at. This actually matches up with the bottom of my pH scale, which is 6.9. So we've looked at lots of different results today. We looked at what happens when you put the algae beads under regular white light, under a red lamp, under a green lamp, in natural sunlight, and in the dark. You're gonna use these changes in pH to answer some questions and also write a conclusion about kind of what these different conditions do, what process takes over, and how does this relate to the two different processes of photosynthesis and cell respiration that we've learned about. Thanks.